the number one comment that is posted on all of my custom CSS videos is how do I change one specific thing? And that's exactly what we're covering in this video. I'm Becca Harpain, Squarespace expert and educator from InsideTheSquare.co, and I'm about to teach you how you can customize an individual item in your Squarespace website using CSS. I've got important resource links and timestamps in the description below, but without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so I can teach you exactly how to create a code that customizes one thing at a time in your Squarespace website. Let's get started. Here we are inside Squarespace, and the first thing we're gonna do is navigate to our custom CSS panel so we can add some code. I'm gonna click on Pages on the left-hand side of the screen here. Then I'm gonna select Website Tools, and then custom CSS. This is where we're gonna paste our code we're using today. I'll go ahead and zoom in on this and everything I'm about to share will be linked in the description below. Now, the first thing I wanna do is change this heading three text to be a different font family. So I'm gonna say H3 font family serif. And both instances of the heading three text on my website has changed. But what if I only wanted to see that new font family for the text inside this content block right here? For that, I'm going to click on a Chrome extension, a free Chrome extension from Will Myers called the Squarespace ID Finder. I'm gonna click on this extension and instantly we're gonna see a ton of content here on our Squarespace website. Now we've got this right here, the collection ID. That is for the container of the entire page. After that, we have a data section ID. This right here is highlighting in blue the entire container that is that data section. Now inside that container, we have different blocks of content. These are again, containers that contain content. So if this right here is the container that I wanna target, I'm gonna grab that block ID and I'm gonna add it to the very beginning of my code. Let me go ahead and turn off the ID finder so we can see the difference here. Now you can see that I've told the computer browser inside this container, if there's a heading three font, I want you to make it the font family serif. And now that's the only instance on my entire website that's getting changed. Now let's say I wanted that to be for the H3s in the entire section, so both of these, I'm gonna click on that extension again and I'll grab the data section ID turn off the extension and I'll add that to the beginning of my code. And now I'm telling the computer inside this container, this page section, if there's an H3, change the font family. Definitely a great trick to know. Now there are a few other nuances I wanna share with you. I'm gonna remove this code right here and let's talk about these buttons over on the right hand side of the screen. If we wanna change the background color of this first button right here and we grab its block ID, I'll turn off the extension here and we'll paste the block ID. And then we're gonna say background red important, spelled correctly, there we go. The entire content block gets that background color. That's not what we want. We want the button inside the content block. So we need to say target the SQS block button element, which is just the button inside that content block to give it that red background. So again, we're saying inside this container, when you see this particular item, I want you to do this. Now, this is super helpful for any content block on your Squarespace website. But if we scroll down the page here, I want you to see that I've got a list section, sometimes referred to as a people section. Now, check this out. When I turn on the ID finder, we have a data section ID, but that's it. The content in here doesn't have a block ID. So how do I change just this individual item, this second one, to give the text a white background? We can still do that using some clever custom code. I'll turn off the ID finder and we'll say, hey, computer browser, inside this section, when you see a list item and it is the second list item, I want you to give it a background that is a solid white color. That is how we can target an individual item inside a page section that doesn't have content blocks. We need to know the selector, and then we can count down the selectors here. Now I'm gonna scroll down to the next page section, which is a gallery section. This gallery has a bunch of images on it, but let's say we wanna change this fifth image right here to have a grayscale filter. Now, if we turn on the Squarespace ID finder, again, we have the data section ID, but no individual block IDs. So I'm going to turn this off and I'll show you here if we add the data section ID and then we tell the computer to put a filter on all of it that's grayscale, it'll change every image in there. But if all we want to change is the fifth image and we don't know the selector, I can say asterisk nth child five. And that's a dash instead of a zero. There we go. Asterisk nth child five 
filter grayscale one. And now I've told the computer browser inside this section, when you're looking at any of the content in there, take the fifth thing that you find and give it a grayscale filter. Now, this technique is not going to work for a list section here because there's so many different pieces of content. We've got the section title, an image, the item title, the item description. This technique with the asterisk here works best when we're talking about an entire gallery section. Again, that's the asterisk followed by nth child five saying apply this filter to the fifth image. Now, if we change five to four, the fourth image will be changed. We can change it to six. The sixth image will be changed. This is how we can target an individual item inside a gallery section, this little asterisk trick right here. Now, there are some things on a Squarespace website that don't have data section IDs and don't have block IDs. Those are known as global elements, like the site title right here. If you want to change those individual things, you'll need to know the unique selector for that item. You can find selectors for individual things inside the tutorials on my blog and here on YouTube. And I also have my Squarespace code collection, which is my gigantic list of all the selectors I use to modify Squarespace. So if we hop into the header element section here, you'll see site title text goes by this particular selector. I can copy that and back here in Squarespace, I can say header title text A. Let's go ahead and make the color of this red and we'll say exclamation point important. And that will change the, this item on my Squarespace website. But what if we only want that to happen on one specific page, not site-wide, just one individual page? For that, we need to change the way that we install this code on our Squarespace website. I'm going to copy this entire code right here. We're going to hop out of our CSS panel, and we're going to hop into this individual page. I'm going to click on this gear icon right here to open up my advanced page settings. This is where I can add page header code injection. This code will only load on this individual page. So here, I'm going to say style, because unlike the CSS panel, we can have more than one type of code in the page header. So I need to tell the computer, hey, I'm about to give you a style code. Here's the style code. Okay, I'm done with the style code. Don't forget to close it. That part is super important. Now that I've added it to my page header, I can select save. The page will reload. And now this code, this individual change is only happening on this individual page. Now, I do want to mention at the time of recording this, page header code injection is not available for people using a basic plan. So if that's you, we're going to add this code to a code block on the individual page. It's a very similar thing where that code only loads on that page, but I'm going to go ahead and remove the code from here and select save. We're going to hop into edit mode and we're going to add a block of code to this page. Now, this is a very similar process here, but this will load with the page content. So it might take a split second to see the code change, which is why I don't recommend it. I'm going to remove the demo text here, paste the custom code that we added. Squarespace did that annoying thing where it rearranged the content blocks for us. Thanks, Squarespace. We'll move those back down. But you can see instantly, as soon as I added that code, the global element has changed. And that's just on this individual page where this code exists. Nowhere else on my website is it going to read header title text A color red. So that's how you can change something on an individual page if you're using a basic plan. But again, I'm going to select save and exit to show you. I strongly recommend clicking on this gear icon and adding this to your page header code injection if you can, because it will load before your content does so it's a better experience for your visitors. All right, my friend, we just unlocked a CSS superpower, and I hope you enjoyed learning about this advanced technique for customizing your Squarespace website. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and let me know in the comments, and definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel or join my email list. Head on over to insidethesquare.co forward slash email to sign up, and I'll send you weekly tips and tricks and exclusive insight on how to make Squarespace uniquely yours. Thank you so much for watching, and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. Find everything you need to make Squarespace uniquely yours at InsideTheSquare.co. That's InsideTheSquare.co.